All right, hopefully you remember this scene we've rendered before using previous videos and doing the instancing and that kind of thing, getting our cubes up here. I want to make a camera that can fly around and, and make our scene a little more interactive, like this tool I've been using in many videos. I can fly my camera around like this. I want to show you how to create your own camera so you can fly around so that you're not stuck to just a static scene here, although this is quite nice. Uh, I want to make it a little more interesting. I place the box and the sphere in our world. I want to place the camera in here too. Let's bring the sphere. I'm going to bring the sphere positive X just so we can see it a little bit better. In order to make a camera move around this world, we have to use a world to view matrix as I've been teaching you about in the previous videos. We have to do one of these matrices, which we will apply to every model in the world, hence moving our world around the camera. But the way we're going to code our camera, there's a few ways to do it. I'm going to start with the simplest technique, though, is this is our world coordinate system, this red system. I want to be able to take this camera and say, well, let's put our camera here and point it that way. Or maybe I want to put my camera here and point it that way. Or maybe right here, point it that way. Or maybe in that same location, but I want to point it that way, point it that way, point it that way. So the idea is a camera has a position. That's the position. And it also has a view direction, which way is it pointing. And we're going to use vectors here and a little bit of vector math. You know, at this point, I almost have to force you to go watch all the vector stuff in my game engine programming playlist so you can learn about vectors because it's going to get extremely difficult to do the rest of this uh, video playlist without using vectors. But anyway, I want to be able to put the camera somewhere in the world and say, hey, you're facing that way. Or you're facing that way. That's the idea. But you know, in the end, we always, always, always move the world around the camera, but the way we are going to write our code, it's as if we're putting the camera in the world and pointing it a certain direction. For example, if I wanted to place my camera right here in world coordinates, what is that? This is the positive x axis right there. So it's one, two, three, four off the bottom of the screen, positive four. On the x, the i position will be positive 4 on the x. And then this is the negative z. I'll, I'll do positive z as this direction. So negative z is the other direction. That will be 1, 2, 3, negative 3 for my z. So I'll place my i at 4, 0, negative 3. And then to have my camera look this direction, I have to have a look at point that's in front of the camera. So we will always choose a look at point that is one unit in front of the camera. In this case, one unit in front of the camera would be right here. So our look at point is positive 1, 2, 3 on the x, positive 3 on the x, negative 1, 2, 3 on the z, negative 3, like so. Our up vector, we won't touch it, will always be pointing in the positive y direction. So that's how we're going to write our code. Put my camera here, have it look that way. Well, the beauty of doing all that is when we pass, sorry, let me get a large, large there. When we pass these parameters to our look at function, that will move the world around the camera, as we've seen in previous videos, so that, yes, it looks like our camera is sitting right here looking into the scene. Let me just tweak the sliders as we've done before, and you can watch the camera move. I'll change this to a four, or the camera won't move. The world will move, but it'll look like the camera's actually moving around the world. For example, from this view, it looks like the world's moving, does it not? And that is exactly what's going on. The world is moving. Let me slide that up to a three, slide that down to a negative three. You can see, ah, voila, our camera on the red grid ended up at the exact point that we wanted to. Even though the camera didn't move, the world moved, our camera's at the exact point we want, and we know the camera's looking down the negative z axis, and that's what we would see is the sphere and the cube. Now when I go to this view, that's what the camera sees. Looks like the near plane has to come a little further, maybe the far plane. I'll adjust that a little bit, but there you go. That's the idea. We need to move the world around the camera, but we'll write our code as if we're moving the camera around the world. From this fixed eye to camera position, uh, look that we have. When I do these sliders, it looks like the camera's moving instead of the world moving. Maybe it still looks like the world's moving to you because you're used to the world moving to you. But you can kind of think of this as camera moving around the world when we actually, when all is said and done, it looks like the camera's moving around the world and the sphere and the cube are set in their position. They're not movable. Anyway, 
we are going to code our camera up using that logic. Let's go to our code and actually stub out some, some, some details of the camera, and then in future videos we'll get this functionality working. I'll bring our code back up. Okay, here's our world that does this scene. We've been through this code. Hopefully you're comfortable with this code. Let's add a camera class. I shall right-click add class, which is a fancy way in Visual Studio of saying add a header file and a CPP file for me. Pretty, pretty, please. I shall call it camera. Hit enter. Get rid of this. Sometimes Visual Studio is a little too helpful. It drives me nuts when it generates so much code. Let's go back to our camera class. I'm going to pound and glue glm. glm.hpp. We need two vectors. glm vec3. This will be the camera position. And glm vec3. This will be the view direction. View direction. Going back to our world, if you if I had the world up here, we want to say, here's the camera, look that way, here's the camera, look that way, here's the camera, look that way. So the position vector is the dot, even though it's really a vector coming off the origin of the world. And so that's the position vector. The view direction is the way the camera's facing. You could stand right here and point your camera that way, point your camera that way. You could spin it around and make people sick, but the camera would still be at that location. So that's view direction. And then let's add GLM mate for get view matrix, or let's do get world to view matrix. Remember, I like naming these matrices based on what they do. Often you'll hear it called model view projection matrix when it's really model to world, world to view, view to projection. So we're doing the world to view matrix. This will be a const function because it will not modify any data members of our camera class. Let's do a new vertical tab group so we can keep the header file and the CPP file on the screen at the same time. Get rid of that. Let's write an implementation for this function. We could also inline this to make it optimal if you like. Since this is going to be a short function, that will be called often. It's tempting to inline it. I'll leave that up to you. I'll probably just put mine in here. GLM. Oh, I copied that, didn't I? Control V. Get rid of that. Curly's. Camera. Camera. One thing about the view direction, it always has to be of length 1. We'll work on that, but that's called a normalized vector. It's called a unit vector because it's length 1, meaning it's one unit. If it was 1 meter, or 1 centimeter, or 1 yard, or 1 whatever you use to measure distances where you live. So our view direction needs to be length 1, and we'll just have it looking down the negative z-axis to start out with, because that's what we're used to. That will align the world to the view coordinate space. So 0 0.0f, 0 0.0f, negative 1.00f, and that is our view direction. To get our world to view matrix, it's real simple. We need GLM transform. So pound include GLM GT6, I think. <coughs> Sorry, I said that kind of weird. GTX slash transform.hpp. Then right here we shall return glm look at, and let me drag this to the right, look at, our eye position is simply the position, position of the camera, the center, that's the look at point or what we want to look at, that is one from the position in the direction of the view direction, so position plus view direction, let me illustrate that back in our tool. Let me bring the tool back up. Okay, I know you can't see the whole window, but don't worry about it. As I did in previous video, the camera position was here, and the view direction was this way. Well, I told you that the view direction will always be one unit long, and you can see the units here on my grid. This is one unit from here to here. That's one unit, so I shall draw our view direction vector right there. And the camera position, even though it feels like a position, like a dot in space, it's really a vector. I'll draw a vector from the origin of the world to the camera, like so. And if you look at my vector edition videos, or go browse Khan Academy for vector edition, this vector, the camera position, plus the view vector, gives me the look at point. And so that's why I can say position plus view direction, 
that gives me the look at point. This is the look at point. I want my camera here. I want it looking at this point. And so it's the same as looking this way. And everything in the scene will show up to the camera. So that's why I wrote that code the way I did. Let's go back to our code. Look at position plus view direction. And then we need an up vector. The up vector will always be in the y direction. So I'll say const glm vec3 up. And then right here we need to initialize our up vector. So comma up up with capitals. Open parenthesis. Nothing in the x, all in the y, and nothing in the z. Technically the up vector does not have to be normalized, meaning length one, but we generally keep it that way. So now I can say up parenthesis and that returns our get world to view matrix. Let's see if we can actually use this camera in our code since our camera by default isn't going to change anything that we've been doing before. But I want to see if we can at least use it. Let's pound include. Let's get rid of this. Pound include our camera. Pound include camera. And where was it? Send data to OpenGL. We had some code here. This is our model matrix right here, or model to world matrix. This is our projection matrix. We need to fit our world to view matrix right in between these. So let's give our GL window a camera. I'm tempted to just throw it up here with all the other trash I've been doing statically. Why not? Camera. This is kind of bad. I should... I'm keeping it all in one compilation unit because I think it's easier to do videos on that, but really this should be a member of me GL window. Anyway, let's go down here. We have a camera, and then right here, alt drag down, camera dot get uh, world to view matrix, print print, and then multiply that in. I'm not sure why IntelliSense died. Let's try building. See if it builds. Can't open for writing because I already have it open. Let's try again. Build. Build started. Build succeeded. Control F5. We still get the exact same view even though we threw our camera in. And that's what we should get because by default we had our camera looking down the negative Z direction, which, is, which aligns the world perfectly. The world coordinate system aligns the world coordinate system perfectly with the camera as we saw in our tool back here. I'll bring this into view. <clears throat> as we saw with our tool right, right now, the world coordinate system is aligned to the camera, meaning the world's positive x is this direction, positive z is this direction. The camera's positive x is the exact same direction as the world. The camera's positive z is the exact same direction as the world. And up is the same for both of them as well, or the y axis is pointing directly up. Once I change any of these values in here, for example, right now we're looking down negative one, but if I go and change any of these values, like our look at point, let's change it on the X, and that's going to rotate the world around the camera. Anyway, we'll get into all that and code that up in the next video.